if you're looking to make a website, then choosing the right tools to make your website can make a massive difference. Not only in how easy it is for you to learn it and make the website, but ultimately how successful your website is going to be. So this could be a point of stress. A lot of people look out there and say, wow, there's so many different options. Which one is the best for me? And it, it can be confusing, but I've actually tested dozens and dozens of different website builders. I've made websites with them, figured out with each one, what their strengths and weaknesses were, where they would really excel and what makes them easy or difficult to use. And in this video, I wanna share with you five of the very best website builders broken down by category instead of a list because ultimately everybody has different needs. You may be trying to make a blog and maybe you just don't care about the podcast or the e-commerce aspects of it, or maybe the other way around. So the five categories that I chose in no particular order are the best for e-commerce, the best for blogging and otherwise more powerful stuff as well. The best for beginners, uh, specifically beginners that really wanna customize their website but don't wanna do anything advanced, no coding, nothing like that. Just kinda wanna you know, drag things around and, and make it look exactly how you want. The fourth one is the best for advanced design. If you wanna have some animations going on, something a little bit more than just a regular you know, billboard on the internet. And then of course the fifth one is the best all rounder, the best overall that if somebody just said, hey Mike, I wanna make a website, what should I use? This is kind of my default suggestion there. So getting through these, starting off the first one, the best for e-commerce really has to be none other than Shopify. You've probably heard about this, is one of the e-commerce giants out there. And not only does it make it easy to design your website because they have a lot of templates, you can go and basically just choose one, change the text, change the images, and in only really minutes, you're pretty much ready to go with a beautiful professional website. But like I said, not only that, it also has a lot on the back end. You can do inventory tracking, you can integrate with different drop shipping or other apps out there, for example, that could notify you when your inventory is low, could automatically order things. You could never have inventory and maybe, like I said, do drop shipping where it places orders with like Printful or other print on demand services. And of course, it also integrates with things like MailChimp and other uh, marketing services that you have available. So Shopify really does offer a lot. It's also heavily used by many of the giants out there. I really recommend the next time you go to buy something directly from a brand, whether that's protein powder or the camping supplies or maybe like Kim Kardashian, like beauty, whatever she sells, you can go and, and, and actually inspect the page and more times than not, I think you'll be surprised, they're usually made with Shopify. Moving on to number two, this is actually a two for one here. So the main category is best for blogs, but it's also the most powerful as well. This is more advanced, but like I said before, I have a full tutorial for this as well that shows you step by step. So don't be intimidated. I can walk you through it and show you how to do this. The winner of this one is actually WordPress, but not wordpress.com. This is wordpress.org, which is the free version that is really powering a, a pretty large portion of the internet. I think it's about one third of the internet uh, uses WordPress. A lot of big news article, uh, news sites, a lot of blogs out there are built on WordPress. It's super common and there's a reason it's so common. That's because it is so powerful. There's so many different apps, plugins, integrations that you can use with this. And of course you can't just have WordPress, that is kind of like the software, that's that's your essentially your content management system, your CMS, but that has to be hosted on something. So the combination that I would recommend is WordPress being hosted by Hostinger, which is very fast, very affordable, really powerful, and I've used them for many websites. They're just like a nice, reliable company to work with. I've always enjoyed using Hostinger. Then I also recommend the third thing here. So you have WordPress hosted on Hostinger, and you need to have a builder on top of WordPress that can make it easier to design your website. I would personally recommend either getting Elementor or Divi. If you have just one website and you're just starting off, Elementor is a good way to start because it is free to start and you can pay to upgrade eventually. If you have a bunch of different websites already, or, or if you plan to have a lot of different websites, then Divi is a better option in my opinion, because you can buy one license and apply it to multiple websites, kind of a nice benefit there, but you do have to pay for Divi pretty much no matter what. So that is the combination I would recommend. And, and I could really make an entire video explaining why WordPress is so powerful, but you can customize basically anything you want. For example, you can have two-factor authentication for you to sign in. You can have multiple users that have different uh, roles. They can be an editor, they can be an admin, they can do really anything you want very, very specifically. So you can hire a team of writers, 
but then maybe you only manage certain things. You can also have lots of like link redirects and affiliate links uh, baked into there. You can have uh, a really more advanced SEO. And of course you can make a much larger website and you don't really have the same restrictions you'd have with traditional website builders. So WordPress, obviously, like I said, super powerful. It's really exciting. I like talking about it, but it's definitely a little bit more technical. So getting to something a little bit easier, the best for beginners, specifically beginners who want to kind of customize it, they want to play around with it, they want to drag and drop and make it look their way. The best here, I would say, is actually going to be Wix. Wix is extremely beginner friendly. They have a lot of checklists that walk you through everything. And it's a drag and drop editor. You just start off with a template uh, and then you can drag and put whatever you want, add images, buttons, text. It's all really intuitive. It's It feels like the first time you use it, most people find that they're very comfortable right away. It doesn't seem like a foreign thing to use and it's very, very user friendly. In addition, they do have some more advanced things really baked in as well. So they have a lot of marketing tools. You can very easily just go and, and follow their checklist on SEO as well. They have an SEO whiz that kind of just says like, all right, fill out this, fill out that, and it'll optimize it so you can rank on Google. Wix really just has a lot baked in and it keeps getting better and better. So Wix, as far as beginners go, is a really easy recommendation. A lot of small businesses benefit from using Wix. You could just have a one pager. You can have a small blog on there. You could sell things. It's pretty versatile and they also have booking and things like that. Moving on to number four on this list, the best for customization. If you wanna have a website that as you scroll down has like different animations and, and different things going on, then the winner here is actually one that a lot of people surprisingly don't know about. This is Webflow. So Webflow really satisfies this one perfect band in the market where you're not looking for a Wix. You're not looking for like a basic thing. You want more advanced stuff. You wanna add your own touch to this and, and you're a little bit more competent. You're willing to get a little more technical, but you, you're not a full stack developer. You're not trying to make this in Adobe. And, and so Webflow really gives you a lot of options to customize it. Then again, I have a full tutorial, but really I think the best way to demonstrate this is you can go and check out a whole, a whole list of different websites that are made with Webflow. And I've seen people make them that are like duplicates of Apple's uh, like iPhone page and things like that. So as you scroll down, like the darkness goes away, the phone gets exposed and like text pops up, uh, different things happen throughout the page. It's just a really cool, like, I don't know, I'll, I'll link that down below. You should check that out. And then number one, the jack of all trades, the best overall, in my opinion, if somebody just said, Mike, I wanna make a website, what should I use? I would tell them to be using Squarespace. I really like using Squarespace. And although Wix is a really, really close runner up, Squarespace, in my opinion, pulls ahead very slightly. I definitely lean towards Squarespace and I'll explain why. So Squarespace, you start off by choosing from a lot of different templates. I love the way they're designed. And for me personally, I like this look a little bit better. Then on top of that, once you start using Squarespace, you can customize your website just as you always could with Squarespace, but they've recently added some really cool features that make them more similar to Wix. So that's, that's one of the drawbacks that Squarespace used to have is that you weren't really able to move things. Like if you wanted a picture to be a little bit further to the left, it was really difficult to do that. But now you can click and drag things around on kind of a grid layout that makes it very intuitive and also very customizable. So that's a huge benefit for Squarespace. And what I really like is that they have a lot of things already baked in. Although Wix has more apps and plugins, which is a huge benefit there, if you're not necessarily looking to customize, like really customize everything, then Squarespace has a lot of it already baked in. You've got scheduling, you've got the ability to sell things, you've got a good blogging abilities on here. You can customize, you can really optimize it for Google as well so you can rank well in search. And something a lot of people don't mention is you can also host a podcast on Squarespace. So if you don't know which of these to go with, Squarespace is really a solid bet. Of course, Wix is a number two as well, in my opinion. So before you click off this video, yes, those were my picks for the best five website builders, but the next step is actually to go and watch the full tutorial. If you found this video helpful, I really hope that you'll also find my tutorials helpful. They're completely free. We don't sell any courses. I'll link them all in the description below. They're all just on YouTube. So you can go and see the latest tutorial for how to use Shopify or Webflow or whatever it might be. And that should get you going. Within about an hour or two hours after that, I think that you should probably have your website up and running or at least the very beginning of your website. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Michael Bryan from Santral Media. Good luck with your website and I'll see you next time.